a lot of people have an issue, especially when they're trying to compete in the CrossFit Open. What's up? It's Ben from Wad Prep. Wad Prep is the place where athletes like you go to improve their CrossFit skills. And today's video is all about getting you the best score possible on Hero Workout DT. So this is one of the most popular CrossFit Hero wads. Whether you identify as a CrossFitter or whether you're just trying to honor the fallen soldier, we are happy that you're here. And in this video, I'm gonna help you get your best score possible. So in this video, we're gonna talk about how you can strategize the reps and rounds so that you get through these hang power cleans, deadlifts and push jerks in the proper order and at the proper speed. Next, I am going to reveal a few key tips for the deadlift for the hang power cleans and for the push jerks. A few of these tips are gonna help you move that barbell more effectively and efficiently. And then number three, I am going to give you a couple freebies at the end of this workout. I'm gonna send you to a page where you can download a bunch of at-home CrossFit workouts for free. And then also I'm going to give you access to a few of our best barbell resources. So DT is a workout where we use a barbell the entire time. If you're someone that wants to learn how to move that barbell more smoothly in the movements like DT has or any of the weightlifting movements then you can download our free guide. And again, I'll share all the details at the end of this video. So before we move any further, it's really important that we discuss why we do hero wads. What is the point of doing a hero workout? Hero workouts have a tendency to be a little harder than most other CrossFit workouts. And unfortunately, they just become this badge of pride. Like, oh, I did a hero workout. Why do we perform hero workouts? And my theory behind this is we perform hero workouts to honor the fallen. We perform hero workouts with friends and family or maybe with ourselves for introspection. So what's really important is that you understand that this workout is named after a fallen soldier. So I'm gonna read a quick description for you to make sure that I get everything right. So DT is in honor of Air Force, US Air Force Staff Sergeant Timothy P. Davis. He's, he was 28 years old and he was killed on February 20th, 2009 when supporting operations in OEF when his vehicle was struck by an improv improvised explosive device, an IED. Timothy was survived by his wife, Megan, and his son, TJ, who was one years old at the time when he passed. This hero wad was first posted on CrossFit.com main site as the workout of the day for Tuesday, April 14th, 2009. So while you are doing DT, while we really want you to get your best score possible and we're gonna get into all the strategy behind it, I really want you to understand who this is for and why we're doing this. Remember, it's not about you, it's about honoring the fallen and honoring those who protect and serve us every day. So DT is five rounds for time of 12 deadlifts, nine hang power cleans, and six push jerk. This workout is supposed to be moderately heavy. So if you are someone who cannot finish this workout as prescribed with the weights that are listed, if you can't do the workout in less than 15 minutes, chances are you probably want to scale down a little bit. Some might argue you can stretch it all the way to 20 minutes and that's fine. It's your decision and if you're trying to honor the hero, I wouldn't say that the weight is dependent on that. I would say what, what's really important about this workout is that you get the stimulus, which is this sucker should be heavy and it should be hard and I'm gonna help you try to get through it no matter which weight you choose. If you break that 15 minute barrier or if you if you get into the upper teens, then chances are you probably, sh probably should have scaled down. For reference, several years ago at the CrossFit Games, they did heavy DT. So rather than 155 pounds for the men and 105 pounds for the ladies, it was actually 205 pounds for the men and 145 for the ladies. And do you know what people got on that? Ben Smith got sub eight minutes. He did it in seven minutes and 55 seconds. And Sarah Sigmund's daughter did it in eight minutes and 25 seconds. So let me just tell you, those numbers show us how this workout can be done. They were able to add a ton of weight and still get it done sub 10 minutes. Now, I'm not expecting that you or I are going to get CrossFit Games level performances, but if they can do heavy DT in that kind of speed, then we should be able to do DT at the, the prescribed weight or maybe even lighter than the prescribed weight and finish in that 10 to 15 minute range. And if you're someone who's a really solid athlete and can get through these movements really smoothly, then you might actually be finishing in the five to 10 minute range, which is a great score. One of the most common mistakes that I see people make when it comes to DT is they fall for the trap. It's a trap. So the first round or so of DT, you will feel great. 
your heart rate is going to skyrocket holding onto the barbell for so long and then rounds two through five will get increasingly miserable and chances are they're going to get a lot slower so do not fall into the trap of going out at 100 percent speed it's really important that we throttle our efforts a little bit in the first couple rounds so that we can finish strong and finish with a great score Another thing I want you to watch out for is that the push jerk, I think, is probably the limiting factor of this workout. The push jerk, especially if you're trying to string it together after the hang power cleans, you are going to be tired. And the push jerk is normally where I see athletes fail. So make sure you're testing the push jerk weight and you are comfortable with it because the deadlifts and the hang power cleans might actually not be very heavy for you. But all of a sudden, when you put that barbell overhead after all of that work, things will get very, very interesting. And one more thing is that this workout is very grip intensive. You will feel a serious forearm pump. There will be an arm pump from this workout. All of those hang power cleans, you trying to stop that barbell and change its direction, and then also holding onto it to go overhead and the deadlifts, it's pretty grip and shoulder intensive. Your legs might not burn too much, but my goodness, your upper body will. So let's talk about each movement. We're gonna start with the 12 deadlifts. So when we do the deadlifts, the points of performance are the barbell starts in the ground, and then we stand all the way up. A lot of people have an issue, especially when they're trying to compete in the CrossFit Open, where they don't stand up all the way. I'm not calling anyone out, but it's just a general call out. So make sure you're standing all the way up. That means hips fully extended. You squeeze your butt at the top and your shoulders should be slightly behind or at least above the bar. You shouldn't still be hunched over. So make sure you're standing every single rep up and then you come down, you touch the plates and stand right back up. Honestly, this is the easiest part of the workout in my opinion. The 12 deadlifts will not be a major limiting factor, but I will admit they do get a little annoying in the fourth and fifth round. One thing that I do to improve my deadlift performance and not make it hurt my grip so much is rather than having a double overhand grip, I stagger my grip. So I'll have one hand over and one hand under or vice versa. And that allows me to relax my grip and still pick up the bar. Basically, all the efforts are going into the back of my legs. It's not me trying to death grip the bar with my hands both facing me. And then one of the biggest tips that I suggest, and we'll probably get into this a little bit later on when I talk about the specific rep scheme that I recommend, but what we want to do is we want to avoid the 13th deadlift. So you'll know you have, a tw you have 12 deadlifts and then it goes straight into the nine hang power cleans. So what we should do is your 12th deadlift should be you picking up the barbell to start your hang power cleans. So what I'm going to do is a lot of times I will purposefully drop the bar on the 11th rep, shake out my arms, take a deep breath, and then pick up the barbell with my standard grip, with the hook grip, I will pick it up, and then I am ready to do my hang power cleans. That allows you to combine basically two movements. So to start the hang power clean, you're going to need to get the bar to your hip, and a deadlift is getting the bar to your hip. So make sure you don't do 12 deadlifts, drop the bar, and then pick it back up, because then you're doing extra work that you don't need to be doing. With so many reps that need to be done in this workout, every wasted movement will hurt your score, and it will hurt your energy. So let's conserve our energy and make sure that we do 11 reps, maybe drop it, shake it out, take a deep breath, and then go straight into our hang power cleans, finish that 12th deadlift, take a, a slight pause, because remember, you do have to pause at the hip for the hang power clean, and then go into your hang power cleans. And it almost goes without saying, if the deadlift is heavy for you, so if you're barely picking up the weight and you're struggling and shaking and it's just not good, then you absolutely need to scale down because the deadlift should be the easiest piece of this workout and it should also feel the lightest. So if the deadlift is difficult, you need to scale down. Next, let's talk about the hang power cleans. This is a movement that throws a lot of people for loops and a lot of people will mess up a whole bunch of these tips. So pay close attention. These are really going to help you. Let's start with the points of performance. So when we're doing a hang power clean, what are the standards? So the barbell starts at our hip. We generate momentum, get the bar to your shoulders. When the bar lands on your shoulders, the standard is your elbows need to pass through and in front of the bar. So we don't need to see the elbows all the way up and pointed forward. Simply getting the elbows in front of that vertical plane of the bar, that will technically count as a rep. Some people will, will make it so that the barbell has to actually be resting on your shoulders, and that is what we recommend. But even if you have front rack limitations, if you simply get the elbows in front of the bar, that's a good rep if you finish the rest of the movement, which is standing up all the way. So we have to make sure that our feet are underneath 
our body and my knees and hips are fully extended. Very, very, very often I will see people moving through this workout too quickly or too aggressively or maybe the weight's too heavy for them and they just look like absolute bros when they're doing these hang power cleans. These are hang power cleans that I might have gotten away with in high school football, but you're not going to get away with them in a CrossFit gym and you shouldn't get away with them in this hero workout. Remember, we are sticking to the standards here. So again, hips, knees fully extended, elbows need to be in front of the bar, bar should be on our front rack, so the, basically the front of our shoulders above our collarbone. If you can do those things, there is a few different variances that we can throw into the hang power cleans to make them easier. Tip number one is I definitely suggest holding the hook grip. For me personally, I hold the hook grip the entire time. So because I think it's annoying to release catch and then reset my hook grip every single rep, what I will do is I'll dig in my, my deep hook grip and then at the top of each rep, I catch it and then go straight back down and I keep the hook grip the entire time. Depending on your grip strength, depending on how comfortable you are with the hook grip, this might feel a little weird, but if you can not release the hook grip for all nine reps, all five rounds, then you're going to save a lot of time and you reduce the risk of accidentally missing that hook grip catch or, or forgetting to hook grip and then having that bar absolutely smoke your grip. So let's talk about two different versions of a good hang power clean. So version number one is what I call the slow and controlled version. So the hang power clean, I'm going to let the bar go down my thighs. So it's going down my upper legs. And then I'm using that tension, I'm using that leverage to accelerate the bar upward and catch it on my shoulders. So this is the slow and controlled or smooth hang power clean. And it's what I recommend for most people. If you want, you can try leaving your feet slightly wider than your normal hang power clean position. The less feet movement we have during this workout, the better. So for me personally, I like to have my feet slightly wider than my normal one rep max hang power clean. And with those slightly wider feet, I will try not to move them hardly at all throughout the entire set of hang power cleans. What all too commonly happens is people will do this dance where their their feet are going really wide they're maybe even starfishing and then they're kind of like stepping all over we don't need to do any sort of salsa dancing <laughs> when we're doing hang power cleans. Our feet can stay glued to the ground. If you want, they can jump out and come back in a little bit each rep. But honestly, from a pure efficiency standpoint, I like just seeing people glue their feet slightly wider than their hips, maybe underneath their shoulders, and then just knock out the hang power cleans that way. That is a great way to execute a smooth and efficient hang power clean. Now, an even quicker way to add on to this is doing what I call the bar bounce hang power clean. This is not for everyone, and my goodness, if you don't have the proper padding on the front of your quads, this one can get a little painful for everyone. So the bar bounce method simply means I'm keeping my torso vertical, I'm letting the barbell hit my upper thigh, and then boom, it comes right back up. I'm actually, even at 155 pounds, which I'm demoing in this video, I can feel the bar flexing underneath that impact on my quads. Again, this, it does kind of hurt your upper quads, but this is way, way faster than doing the slow and smooth, the slow and controlled hang power clean. So if you have the ability and you have the strength and you have the control, and you have the padding, then you can do the bar bounce method. And this is a very quick and effective way to do hang power cleans. Again, I would caution you only do this if you're really experienced with the barbell and you have the competency to move through all nine reps like this and not jump around too much. But if you can get away with it, you're gonna save a lot of time. Another thing is try not to pause too much while you're under tension. So while we have that bar off the ground, if you waste a lot of time with the bar on your front rack, or even worse probably, if you waste a lot of time with the barbell at your hip, you are wasting a ton of energy. So try to move effectively smooth and slow like so slow is smooth smooth is fast that's a navy seal mantra that can work very well here for the hang power cleans but i would just highly suggest find a rhythm and a pace so that you do not have to drop the bar with the hang power cleans if you have to drop the bar it's a lot of work just to get it back up to your hips and then go on to the next rep so what we suggest in this instance and this is something that i do quite commonly is that on the eighth rep i will drop the bar and that's because I want the ninth rep, once I finish that hang power clean, I want to be able to take it from the front rack and go into six unbroken push jerks. It's very important. And I think this is the key to getting a good score in this workout. If you can save enough energy and maybe take a quick breather and then pick up that ninth hang power clean and go into six unbroken push jerks, if you can nail that every single round, nail that transition, you will probably get a great score because you're not going to be wasting a ton of time and you're not going to drop the barbell from overhead, which is probably the worst thing you can do if you're not done the push jerks yet.
And what this does is it allows us to avoid the 10th rep of the hang power clean. So I talked about how we don't want to do the 13th rep of the deadlift. Well, we don't want to do the 10th rep of the hang power clean. You guess it, it's time to talk about the push jerks. When it comes to the push jerks, the points of performance are the barbell needs to be overhead with my elbows fully locked out. So I'm looking for not this, this all the way locked out, both arms overhead. And then another common thing, it's the same issue that happens with the hang power cleans, is we have to make sure that our hips and our knees are fully extended. It's very easy to lock out the bar overhead, but then forget to extend our knees and our hips, and then that is a no rep. So it's really important when we start driving the bar overhead, drop under the bar like there's a trap door underneath of you. So you want to drop under the bar, get those elbows locked out, and then make sure you finish the rep by standing all the way up. I also like to think of driving my head through the window. So when I'm doing a push jerk, if I keep my head back, a lot of times my arms will stay bent. However, when I'm driving overhead, if I push through the window, if I drive my head through the window that's created by my arms, it has a tendency to get me in a good rhythm and it makes me lock out much quicker and much more aggressively. Like I mentioned earlier, it's really important that we gauge our competency here. I've seen a lot of people do like a couple reps in warm up and they're like, oh yeah, I'll be fine with that. And then they just get just just destroyed by this part of the workout when it's actually in the heat of battle. So you have five rounds of six push jerks. We hope we can keep them relatively unbroken. That's a tall order for a lot of people. So be sure you're focusing on your form, you're driving your head through your shoulders, and use your legs to get the barbell overhead. So you can think about jumping the barbell off your shoulders, and when you jump off your shoulders, then you drop underneath your jump. That's how I teach the push jerk to some of my beginner athletes, and it works really well. So try it for yourself. What we don't want is the push jerk to look like this awful, struggling mess with your feet wide, and you're, you're catching it with your elbows at a 90 degree angle, and then strict pressing it overhead. If you're not efficient in the push jerk, I assure you this workout will put you in the dirt. So please do not sacrifice your form and efficiency to try to reach that higher weight. Stick with a weight where you can move this push jerk smoothly and effectively. Just like I mentioned for the hang power cleans, I actually don't like moving my feet too much with the push jerk. If I was going for a one rep max, sure. But at this weight, I like to just bump my feet out slightly wider than normal. So maybe underneath the shoulders or even slightly wider. And then I just cycle the barbell with that foot width. Too often I will see people dancing around, their feet are going wide and then narrow and forward and backwards and they're just all over the place. When really, if we just got our feet together and kept them in the same spot, really focusing on driving the hips and dropping under the bar, that is going to help us move even more effectively. Another efficiency tip for the push jerk is we don't want to rest. We shouldn't be resting the bar on the shoulder too much. We shouldn't be resting overhead too much. What we want to do is we want to cycle smooth and effectively. So if you're comfortable, it's actually way more efficient to touch and go the push jerk reps than it is to catch, stand, reset, and then do a push jerk. Obviously, if you're a beginner and you're not really comfortable moving this, this barbell over your head, then by all means, please take your time, move slowly, and be very deliberate with these push jerks. But if you feel comfortable, it's much better to do the touch and go push jerk. It's just gonna be a lot smoother and you're gonna have less time under tension, which is gonna lead to less fatigue. And the last little tip for the push jerk is fight for your last couple reps. Keep your core tight and keep moving. I have seen so many times, and I've done it personally myself, where I'm on the fourth or fifth push jerk and I just drop it. Or I've seen athletes just, just miss that last rep. You need to have a strong mental game here to push through those last few reps with great form so that you can hit these push jerks as close to unbroken as you possibly can. If you do that one thing, that's going to save you a ton of time and you're not going to drop the barbell mid-set and then just look at it for 15 seconds, 30 seconds, an entire minute. We want to get through all those reps and then after the sixth rep, drop the barbell to the ground and it's time to take a solid breather before our next round. We don't want to waste too much time, but if we can drop after that last push jerk, take a few breaths, and then get back on the bar for the easier deadlifts, you will be moving through this workout at a great and effective pace. So let's talk about a couple rep scheme and strategy considerations. We already talked about it a little bit, but the number one most important thing is the fewer drops, the better. I like three drops per round. So I will drop after my 11th deadlift, shake it out, and then pick it up for the hang power cleans. I will drop after my eighth power clean, and then pick it up and then hang power clean to my shoulders so that knocks out the ninth one. And then I will drop after my final push jerk. So that's the 11, eight, six strategy. So even though you are doing 12, nine, and six, it really actually feels like you're doing 11 and then just picking the barbell up and then getting it to your shoulders for your first hang power cleans. And then you're doing eight 
and then you're getting the barbell to your shoulder for the push jerk. So uh, that's what I call the 11-8-6 the strategy. Obviously, it still counts as 12-9-6, but that tends to be enough, just enough breaks to allow you to stay unbroken and keep moving the bar and still get a great score. If and when you do drop the barbell, it's really important that you don't go on a long journey around your gym. You shouldn't contemplate your existence. You shouldn't be walking around. Don't let the barbell scare you. Don't walk up to it and then be like, ooh, I don't want to touch it and walk away. Just stay in the same spot. Take a couple breaths and get on it. If you need to chalk up, make sure your chalk is really close by. You don't want to have to travel too far to get it and stay on that bar. If you can just stay on the bar, drop it as few times as possible. And when you do drop, drop very strategically, then you will get a great score on DT. So I hope that you like these tips. Please let me know if it helps improve your DT score. I would love to hear your personal DT score and the weight that you performed it at and any other details about how old you are, how big you are, how long you've been doing CrossFit. Leave those details in the comments below. And I hope that I helped you improve your score. Remember, this workout isn't about you. It's not about trying to be the best and beat everyone else. This workout is all about honoring DT. It's honoring Timoth, U.S. Air Force Staff Sergeant Timothy P. Davis, who died serving his country. So please remember that. And last, if you are looking for a free workout guide. So if you're looking for a, a big list of workouts that you can easily do at home, so it's 28, I think, free CrossFit workouts that you can do at home, then go into the link in the description where we list that out or in the top comment, I've pinned a couple links for you. So you can go get your free workouts. Next, if you are someone who's looking to move through things like deadlifts and hang power cleans and push jerks and any of the other barbell related movements more smoothly, then we have put together a free resource guide. So go down below, click the link that says barbell resource guide and you're just going to enter your name and email address and then I will send you a breakdown of Wad Prep's favorite videos. I'm actually going to send you to a couple other YouTube channels that have phenomenal barbell breakdowns that exceed my barbell IQ by a lot. So we'll also give you a couple of our favorite videos and a few articles that we've released that will help increase your barbell performance. And again, that's completely free. You'll find it in the top comment below or in the description. Thumbs up if you like the video, thumbs down if you did not like it. And remember to smash that subscribe button if you haven't yet. In the comments below, let me know your DT score. Let me know all the details about how old you are, how much you weigh, and if there's any specific tip that you liked from this video, let me know. Or if you have some for the audience who's watching, then please share some tips with us below. I'll see you in next week's video. Peace.